So now that we are done with uh, also seeing how you can synchronize changes up and down the hierarchical flow, what we would do now is introduce two more things and how to work with them. One is called a bus, which you would keep uh, using in your circuits because you have got the data bus, the address bus and all those things that you have to deal with. And along with that also another thing which is called a net group. Now let's see the bus first. So what we would do is we would go to the hierarchical block and take out these things which we had introduced as an example and uh, get rid of them and then propagate the changes up and down so propagate the changes down so that's gone and then again propagate the changes down here as well so now all of the things are gone and we are back to the circuit with which which we had finished uh, doing the schematic for earlier now let us also go ahead and in the particular 8284 let us imagine that there are four data signals that come in there okay so we would introduce them first so let's do that let's look for the pins and place pin okay so we would name it as d0 and its pin number would be since it's 18 so we'd go from 19 onwards 19 and they are bi-directional so we'll place it here d0 d1 2 3 so these are the four signals which we would be working with right so as we had discussed in earlier videos once we are done with that we go to the sample project tree within the library that we had created look for the or rather not the library the design cache I'm sorry look for the port which got or part which got changed this is the 8284a and we do a update cache go through oops go through the yes cycles so yes yes and yes once that is done, we go back to the 8284 circuits page and now we see that there are four D0 lines which have been placed onto this part over here. What we want to do is we want to connect this to a bus and that bus will take it to another page and let us assume that that page is the output circuit and in this particular output circuit, we would now introduce let's say another connector that has got four pins on it let's say con 4 and yep that's it so we will take that and place it here and to these four pins we would connect that those four lines coming in as a uh, bus so let's see how we can do that so let us go back to the 8284 circuit in here if you would see there is this line which is called a place bus so we would use that so we click that and then near about somewhere here we place a bus say for example and just double click it so that it ends there and be done with it now after that what you would do is you would select the pins you want to connect to the bus so like this and you can hold down control and click so that multiple ones get selected at the same time then you would find another one which is called a connect to bus right once you select that then a sort of a cross appears and now if you click on a particular rather now you need to select the pins I believe yes you need to select the pins now and then select on the bus to which you want to connect these two once you do you will be connected to that bus and you would be asked to name each one of the signals that go into the bus right so let us name it as uh, so pin selected four and entered the net names so let's do it like this d zero to three let's see what happens then and we get a d zero d one d two d three right so this is the way that you can connect them to bus now a couple of things which you need to remember when you are working with a bus and for that matter any wires uh, so to speak or rather principally a bus though and that thing is whenever you are working with a bus let's say that we are going to extend it up to here and then connect it to a port remember that on the buses don't have things like a 90 degree angle okay this 
over here is not something that's good practice so what we rather do is we use this which is basically a bus entry and we can select that and place it anywhere this can be flipped to the other angle by just doing a rotate and it would flip so let us use the other one and we just place it here and then we select the bus again and draw it from here onto this point let's say and you would see that it would be changed at a 45 degree angle so this 45 degree angle is very important the same thing as you saw when I connected the bus the software by itself put the 45 degree connector up into the bus so that's a practice and a standard and that is what you should have on your circuits as well so in here when you want to place say for example a uh, this one's a bi-directional so we would put a bi-directional port in here so let's place that say for example and uh, we would place it here I'll say why I am skipping that one place and uh, we put it here and then we name it as uh, say um, data 0 to 3 either you can name it like this or you can just give it a name as data bus okay so once we have that let's do something let's try and connect it to the bus here if you see this one didn't get connected to the bus and it will not because these ports they always work with wires not with a bunch of signals coming in together so once again what comes to rescue is the bus connect so or rather the bus entry so you would choose that and then this is the other way so we would uh, my mouse is acting up so we would rotate this and then use that to connect these two signals together so now if you can see that the data bus is connected once we are done with this let us go back to the other page the output block where we also need some in here also since it is bi-directional we would need a port and we would probably place it here name it the same as what we did on the other pages so in our case a data bus and we can shift this to wherever we want and then what we like what we would like to do is to bring in a connection in here and then see what happens so let's place a bus entry first and then put the bus itself let's extend it until here for now and double click to end it and wire now what we want to do is we want to connect these four pins to the bus so what we do is we select the auto connect to bus select the pins that we want to connect and choose the bus to which we want to connect it to and click on it when that is done again we give the same name as we did in the last one d0 to the last one so d0 d1 d2 d3 the name gets put in there so once that is done I can do away with this part which is unnecessary and that's your bus connection now once we are done making the changes here we can go back to the hierarchical block and uh, change the change the um, thing by synchronizing the changes up so let's do that and if you can see a data bus has been put on to my, put on the block here oopsie okay a data bus and then on this one also if we propagate the changes up then a data bus gets put in here which we can take to anywhere here let's say okay so that's how you create a bus and work with it but also another thing is on the hierarchical page now when you are joining these two points remember that you have to do it using a bus connect and no longer a wire connect so simple go from one point to the other one join it and you should be all good right now once again same thing this doesn't work here as well so you would use entry to bus one gets placed here another one rotated gets placed there and then you connect the two points using bus connect and that should be sufficient for you to connect the two things or maybe let's wait because this doesn't seem like it is connected as yet we will see if we can just do it with a wire 
yep wire works so on this one we can simply connect it using a wire because as it turns out the data bus here is just a representation whatever inner workings of it that you have to do has already been done for in the schematic pages and the way that we had laid the circuits out okay so that's one way to do it the other way to do it is actually create a bus signal in here so it's the same thing working in one way or the other so what you would do here is in that case you have to create a, a bus signal here and the way that you do that is select this then place a hierarchical pin but now the name has got to be given in a particular way so let's say once again it's a four bit bus and we name it as ad then you have to write it like this zero two three dot dot and three uh, box brackets close and let's say that these are outputs from the 8284 and this is a bus that's where you indicate it and you place it here and then there is say for example another one which is a hierarchical pin that we would be working with and uh, no not for this one but rather for this one and 80 to 3 this time it's an input but a bus nonetheless and we place it here and then we connect the two now it doesn't get connected now we would need the bus connection because we explicitly indicated that it's a bus so we go from one end to the other and it gets connected and now we on the hierarchical page we have a bus so remember this if you have done your schematic properly and then you come over here and you get or synchronize the changes up and it comes out as a single signal then it becomes a wire but if you name it in a way that it is a bus like if I had given data bus box bracket 0 dot dot 3 I would have had to connect it using a bus like you saw here so now let's propagate these changes down so synchronize changes down so now we have a connector and then also on the other front we would synchronize the changes down which again is in here you see that the signals come out of there so instead of these four now let's do away with them and let's do away with this part as well now let's say we want to take it out of here so let's first take it a little bit closer let's have that bus entry thing connect to it first and then we would do a rather draw a bus first and now we will try to do an auto connect to bus select the pins when we do that now we know that they are AD 0 to 3 AD 0 1 2 3 so that's the way that you do it and similarly do away with this part similarly on the other end is also something that you can do let's see this nope. this has to be a bus I believe yep and then on the other side uh, we have the clock IC so again let us do away with these things over here or maybe not the data bus port the rest of it we delete keep it as is and then we have this AD 0 to 3 over here let's take it down here and create a bus from there so let's see how we can do that so we place a bus and place a bus entry let's put it here and then extend that bus to near those pins over there so that we can connect to them and use the auto connect to bus tool to then select the pins and connect to this bus and the pins selected we can name them uh, so this time around it is ad 0 to 3 so if we do that we get connected and that is it so as we saw 
when we are creating bus then the way to do that is using the bus tools which are available over at this particular side another thing to keep in mind is that all the turns in a bus would have to be at 45 degree angles and then whenever you specify the bus you have to specify it using the bus name then within box brackets zero dot dot the maximum size of the bus minus one so if it is a four bit bus you have to have zero dot dot three if it's an eight bit bus you have to have zero dot dot seven so on and so forth now the ports which you are using if you name them as such using the box brackets notation then you would be able to connect them using the bus wire but if you name them just as a single name then that also is going to work but then the connection has to be done using one of the bus entries from the bus and then connecting with it with a normal wire and again the concepts of synchronizing the changes up or down to down, up to the hierarchical block and down from the hierarchical block works as well so that's about working with the bus in the next video we will see how we can work with something that's called a net group and that gives you a lot more flexibility as compared to just the bus feature in ORCAD. So let's get there and see what net groups are and how to use them.